Hey guys, Phil Swat here from Create Effects. I've got a tutorial for you today to show you how to clean up some unwanted problems that you may have had on set. So in this shot you can see that there's a whole lot of tape holding these blinds up. We had to do this on set because we didn't have anywhere, any other way to pin this on the wall. So what I'd like to do is remove the tape here and fix the small problem here with the um, blinds. So this is what I've done to it. So I'm just going to take you through the process of how to do that. So let's just jump in and get started. There's a lot to get through. Right, so first of all, I'm just going to copy this footage and move it to one side. And because we are 3D tracking the scene, it's always a good thing to remove the lens distortion. Now, you don't have to do this. It might, it always just sort of makes it a lot better and increases the quality of the camera track. So because I have it for my shot, I am going to use it. Um, I can do a tutorial in this in the future, but I'm not going to do that today. So if we just go into that and type in camera tracker, we push tab and type camera tracker. We can now plug this in and look through it. And if we just click here on the tracking tab, if you click on preview features, and then what we'll do is we'll bump this up to 500. And we should start to see this. I'm not sure why it's not showing up, but I'll try to plug another one in. Just click once again on tracking, preview features. There we go, we can now see it. So if I bump that up to 500, I'll just remove this one. And I'm going to now click on track features. Now this is probably going to take about 15 minutes or so. I am working on a 4K file. So what I'll do is I'll just pause the recording and I'll come back when this is finished. Okay, so now that that's finished, we can go in and have a look. And what I probably want to do now is just click on Solve Camera. It just takes a few seconds, and uh, once that's done, we can click on the Refine tab here, and we can have a look at the Solve Error. So it's 1.8 at the moment. So what I'd like to do is just bring that down a bit. Now with this shot, because it's just sort of a straight push-in, most of these... Um, tracking markers that we've got now or the track points they should really want to be lost in quite a while because it's a 199 frame shot so if we hover over some of these points you can see that's 200 length on that 200 so what we can quickly do is if we highlight all these um, track length ones by holding control and clicking on them more it sort of brings up all the track lengths and then we can change the minimum track length to be a lot higher so we can bring that right up and we just push F to fit them all in so what I'd like to do is I'm just gonna bring it up and say that the minimum track length should be about somewhere around there so now I can recalculate solve and that should bring this number down a bit okay so it's now down at 1.75 I'll also re delete rejected so it just removes those points um, that weren't long sort of the low length of time trackers now what another thing I'd like to do is just change the max error so if I once again hold control highlight these all click here push F I can now come in and change this max error so that's sort of pixel the max error in the amount of pixels so if I bring this right down should see it starts to highlight certain ones that are moving around and you know aren't very good so what I'm going to do is bring this right down I'll probably leave it about four even three okay once again let's recalculate the solve okay so now we've got 0 0.857 and we've still got quite a lot of good tracks here so what I'm going to do is delete reject it again and then I'm going to create a scene. Just make some more space here. I'm just going to pull this off to the side just to make things a bit neater. Okay, so if I look at that, the scene, you can see the sort of 3D points here for the scene. 
Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to place a card at the point of this back wall. So if I look through the camera tracker and just double click on it, I'm just going to grab a few points on the same plane, right click and create a card. So that now makes a card at that point. What I'm going to do is just going to change the card over a bit, just so it's facing the right way. So you can kind of tell by the scene that not, that now should be facing sort of towards the camera. So what I can do now is if I just look at the footage, I'm just going to do a test, plug a checkerboard into that card. Okay. And now I'm going to plug the card into the scene. I can unplug the camera tracking um, nodes at the moment. Then if I push tab and create a scan line renderer, I can plug the camera into the camera and the object into the scene. And I can now look at that. And if I merge that over the footage, you can see that. But what I will do, because the card is quite big at the moment, I'll just make it a bit smaller. So if I go down to Uniform Scale, I'll just take that down. So now if I play through that, you should see it will start to track onto that back wall there. It's just a bit slow, being a 4K file. But you can see there how it tracks to the back wall. So for now, we'll leave that and we'll move on. I'm going to take the footage and look at, look at that and go to the first frame. So frame zero. I'm going to place a, if I push tab and type frame hold. Actually, I'll make everything a bit neater. I'm holding control to make these sort of points, connection points. So what I'll do now is have the frame hold on the first frame. And what I'm also going to do is denoise this frame because we're going to do some cloning work. And you don't want to sort of be cloning um, grain or noise. So if I click on that, it'll bring up this, di this sort of box here if you just drag it to sort of a uniform color. just sort of some flat space of color and you can see there if I look before and after you can see how it's removed some of the noise there okay we'll just close that down okay so what I want to do now is if I just push P to bring up a roto paint node now there's going to be a lot of different ways you can do this but I'm just going to keep it simple for this tutorial and use a roto paint so if I click on the roto paint there what I will do is come in and change the filter to impulse and click on this round box here and change the frames to all so it paints on all the frames not just the frame we're on at the moment and then if we just come in here and what you have to sort of do now is you hold control and then drag the second point down so you kind of sampling from that top circle there and it's going to paint over the bottom circle so if you then come in and just start very carefully painting and I'm not going to go to crazy amounts of detail for this tutorial because uh, you can kind of take your time at this but I'll do enough just to show you the concept so you come in here and like I said there's going to be many 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 ways to do this you can sort of do other things where you do some roto and then you shift some of the pixels from sort of up here down there's just absolutely loads of different ways to do this. But as I said for this tutorial, I'll just keep it simple. And you can sort of play between this, putting this build on up, sort of having this box ticked and unticked. And also play with the opacity settings. So if you just want to come in and do some really mild changes, you can come in with that and put the opacity down. So I'm just going to come in here and just speed up a bit more. You can literally just come in, and if you hold shift, 
you can come in here and drag with your Wacom pen and it changes the size of the sampling area and the paint area I mean this you can take ages doing this sort of work Okay, you get the idea. And then you can come in now and remove all these bits. And what I'm going to do for this sort of section here, because there's some parallax between this foreground object and the background, I'm just going to paint the foreground away, so extending the back wall. And what we'll do is we'll rotoscope this foreground object back on top. And you can just play with your um, settings here just so you can see a bit better. As I said, I'm just going to paint over this. Okay. I'm not going to go any more crazy on this side. I'm just going to move on to the other side. And what I'm going to do first of all is fix this blind. As you can see, it bent, so it was sort of facing the wrong way. I'm literally just going to clone it from this bottom one here. So I'm just going to try and line up this line here with the top line here and I'm just going to paint what I'll probably do to blend this is just bring the opacity right down and then I'll just paint very lightly over it to sort of blend between the two shades. I mean, there's other ways you can do it. You can use like a rotor node as a mask for a blur node and you can just blur some of these pixels to blend them together. And there's a multitude of ways of doing it. Okay, I'm not going to keep going with this, but you get the idea. You just need to take your time. Probably do some more work on the side here. <laughs> 